Hey everyone, welcome to Brush Thoughts Theater, episode 20. Sorry for the delay, I've been really busy and uh, have been trying to think of a lot, uh, some things to cover that I, I hadn't before. And uh, so what I come to, uh, with you today is I'm about to finish this uh, painting here I've been doing. It's a concept, it's a it's, it's, it's in a mix of all, you know, there's concepts, there's illustrations, there's marketing images. Th this is kind of just like a fun concept that I kind of took to um, basically like an illustration level. So it's a little blend of them. Um, just something I like to, per to do personally when I have the time. And I do have the time because it's a, it's a personal illustration. So I spent a lot of hours on it, more than I normally spend on, on anything really. And uh, most of you know now that I've been following the channel for a while how I start images. And that's always kind of like with these. I do lots of thumbnails, you know. And I just make, um, as you can see here, I make sheets of them. Just, you know, all kinds of ideas. And, you know, and this image down here that I'm working on now it started no differently. I, I kind of started off with these initial thumbnails. And I'm, I, I've, always, I've had this idea for a, a while now, you know, for Sunderfall. I one of these giant, like... Um, flying manta type creatures that roll the sky with this kind of like non-sovereign race I call the Jorah and they they're kind of playing their war drums in my scene or you know they're they're playing um you know they're their they're war their battle chants their war cries and stuff and you get the little leader here up on his thing and get the lightning going because helps with you know bring a certain energy to it and um yeah, I was I struggled for a lot on this trying to figure out the best way to do it. I'm still not convinced. I mean, I, I could probably have done it better if I started over now, but um, it's something to look at for a little while to take in and kind of piece together all the all the little aspects of it. But you know, it, it does have a good initial read, and I arrived at that through this. And so throughout the painting, I battled with basically shrinking this down to the navigator size. And then uh, coming to my painting and then shutting it off. I'm like, is this reading? You know, how's how does this look compared to this? And it it really didn't come together to read as clearly as this does until the very end. So I kind of I saved a lot of the layers. If you can see the layers, I'm not sure how what the overall quality will be, but yeah, I I went through at least <laughs> 140 or so layers, you know, all together on this, and I merge them down and I make new ones. But um. I, I'll, I'll take off, you know, some of the last few adjustments I did, uh, kind of leading up to it, just to kind of explain how I kind of finish these things off. But, you know, the idea is to get, um, a concept like this or whatever, um, as far as you can without kind of worrying about the details. This is all fairly detailed, but there's a lot of still, um, you know, uh, like this is, for instance, it wasn't reading quite well. If I, if, I take off the hue saturation and uh, this yeah you know, this guy in the background as cool as he is I need to keep pushing him back in space to kind of make this guy read even better and so that's what I was struggling with at, at that time uh, and for a while just lightening him up and still applying all the the final detail to it and how much atmosphere do I put in between each guy um, I had repainted all their headdresses I didn't like how they originally looked and you know, this is a lot of the final detail right here. Sorry, my dog's in the background. Right, the, the little room lights, a lot of the texture. Um, and again, still fixing a little bit of the perspective and then finally blowing out the, um, the value on them. You know, I lose a lot of the color and even some of the forms, but it, it just in terms of make this guy read right here, that's what I uh, have to do. Um, it's all compromise, right? And then, you know, add the, the badass lightning and. Stuff and then you know add the little um, there there the clan emblems and stuff on you know the drums and you know I put three of them three is always rule of three is always a good way to go but I'm at this point now where I'm just ready to polish this up so I just kind of wanted to cover a few things I do um, the first one is and this is a, a trick I kind of do uh, recently is I'll copy uh, the entire painting on a new layer it's like uh, shift command alt and e and this makes I do this a lot and that's why I got up to like a hundred load. Uh, layer 152 doing this uh makes a giant thing right here but um i kind of just make a copy of it moving forward and i do a new adjustment layer and i want to posterize this and what this is going to do is add even more um subtle color variety throughout the scene see this is intense and it's it's supposed to look this intense but um you drag the sliders like this to see what has the best result then it obviously gets more subtle the further you go over here and you get a little more green and uh, 
somewhere about oh i like that one the best i get a lot of little a lot of little color it's very streaky very ugly um but that's not what i want to do yet uh what i want to do is basically merge this down to that layer i just made below it hitting um yeah, Command D on my Mac definitely did that. See, let's see, there's the ugly version. There's a good version. But what I can do is turn this new layer to a uh, color mode, and it basically the ugliness gets a lot more subtle as you can see here. But see, like I, it starts to add a lot of these colors I have in the painting in there. And then I can just go, you know, with my uh, my Wacom pen in this case, grab like a big fatty uh, soft eraser brush, you know, around, one, and then I can just. I can soften up a lot of this just where it's really bad but I still like there's lots of just if I only blow this up for a second to really show you this see there's there's magentas there's greens there's I don't know so much cyan but and it adds like a little bit of streakiness to it and I like that personally this is a personal touch mind you this is no absolute way to any of this but and then I have a lot of that kind of going on over here and I'll just subtly remove a little bit of that. See, I like that though. It, it adds to the energy of the piece in this case. Uh, it also does this. You can do this to like character pieces, um, individual uh, environment pieces, and it just adds a nice little punch of color to it. Right, so that's the first thing I do. Uh, number two is uh, I add like a, a, a green layer. And I do this by making a new layer. I take a, a neutral gray somewhere right in the middle somewhere like that and I hit it and I'll and I will fill it uh, the entire page with it boom oh <laughs> there we go I had an artifact there all right so this is just a solid gray right let me blow this up nothing exciting but if I go to filter um, noise add noise I can add this noise here that I want check that out just like that and uh, now what I want to do is just kind of uh, soften it up a little bit, do a little bit of a distortion, I do, and I do uh, ripple. You, it, to, to make it, I really can't tell, but it, it definitely helps kind of um, smoothen that over. And I'm going to do it again just by, uh, you can hit Command F on, on a Mac, which I have, or just run up like that again. So now I have this nice little base for the, the basically like a film grain. And so what I'm going to do is drop this to an overlay mode. So it makes the whole thing very kind of that, that retro -y type of sci-fi film grain you get here, like on a VHS tape. Uh, but I want to do is uh, make this subtle. So I'm just going to take the slider down and I drop that probably to around 26% in this case. And so now I get a little bit of that film grain. Now this is almost there. Um, that's just the, the third real final thing I do every time is I'm going to run a final um, levels check on it. And this, and you, it's totally optional, but it, it definitely helps me get like a secondary balance on things, like a, like a second try at doing it all. Now that the whole painting is done, I have all the details basically in place. Uh, it'll let me kind of go back and, you know, just fiddle with a few last minute uh, adjustments. So if I go to a uh, new layer new adjustment layer levels here we go and you just hit okay right here and I got all these sliders and I got all these toggles and it can be a little intimidating if you never used them before but uh, this is the first one the RGB um, and I see it lets me drastically increase the um, have full control over the brightness or contrast really just by toggling these sliders just to see if I like see I like how I just pinched up the brightness just a bit on that and sliding this one over on the left, I increase the uh, the contrast as well. So I got a little brighter, and still retained a lot of my darks. Uh, this just will take away the contrast. Uh, the bottom ones will, so I won't mess with that. So I like this little adjustment I did. And um, now I just go through these individual color channels: red, green, and blue. So I go to the reds here, and see I can take out like a lot of the the, the reds, and yeah, that in this case clearly doesn't make this does not help a lot but if I do punch up you know just a little bit it helps kind of not make it so uh, monotone and I can yeah, see just a little bit there and I'm not gonna touch that one I'm not gonna do it I don't like it alright and I uh, know I'm into the green 
let's see, that really just, green and, um, what is it, magenta are like on the same scale, so if you add, you take away one, it adds a lot of the other, so that's why, um, if I'm on the green and I'm adding it, or, you know, taking away the green, it's adding a lot of magenta, and I don't like that, so if I can punch up the green doing that, but uh, I think I balanced it throughout the painting fairly well, I might just punch it up just like a decimal, a decimal point worth, <laughs> Just a just a tad, uh, just a tad. Sorry, and then I'll finally go into the blues here, and I kind of like that. Just punching it back up, kind of giving that old rustic type of feel here, and then yeah, I overall you really probably can't tell much. I can go see so just a little bit more of an impact, I think doing that. So I'm going to keep that. And yeah, those are basically the three things I always do. Alternatively, if you want to make, give things a little more texture and gritty, then you could take, uh, you know, go to Google and uh, take one of those um, like canvas textures or uh, painted, any kind of texture basically, and overlay it on the entire image and uh, see if that kind of brings up that canvas texture you're looking for or not. Well, um, it's totally up to you again, personal preference. But yeah, this is how I kind of finish off my paintings and what I'll do before I post this anywhere online or anything like that, I'll just let this sit where I won't look at it for maybe like a day or two and I'll come back and give it one last look to see if I missed any little thing or I'll post it on one of my online forums there, get some community feedback, I'll kind of do that and then once everything kind of all checks out, you know, with me and maybe with a few close peers, then I'll go and I'll post it online. So that's kind of how, at least with my personal work, that's the general process I do. So. Hope this helped kind of somebody uh, out in terms of maybe, you know, you didn't know what to do when you're getting near a painting and you didn't know how to finish it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you for watching and take care. And so this episode's viewer question comes from uh, Gerard on, on Facebook. And uh, I know I spelled your name wrong here. I'm sorry. There was an extra R there. Um, he asked a lot about 3D because I recently put out several... Uh, Gumroad videos, tutorials on painting over 3D. So he's asking, using 3D mockups are extremely helpful for environment pieces. You know, especially those in architecture, because they're they they do serve as a good guide for perspective. But uh, do you still think this method is is still useful in organic in environments with more curvy forms, like a forest? My answer is uh, yeah. Uh, I don't do it personally, but I saw this guy on Facebook too, the Lloyd Allen here. Uh, he made this beautiful scene using um, a 3D mock-up right here. I don't, I don't know what it was done in, but um, it clearly helped, and it, it's quite beautiful. I, I think a lot of that, like, you know, the, the the lighting, kind of, you know, the dappled lighting through the rocks and stuff, a lot of, I think, a lot of this in most cases can be made up. But, you know, it helped, and it made it accurate in, in terms of the spacing and the atmosphere. So, yeah, I think it's perfectly valid. Now, the second part of this question is, uh, do you think uh, that this method can be restricting in any way in terms of making design choices um, or to the painting process? Uh, you know, for example, how do I think that uh, painting over a 3D render with existing textures, lights, uh, and even more assets can dramatically change the look of the final image compared to just painting over a simpler mock-up? I know I don't really find it that restricting. Uh, this is relevant to me. I just had finished this scene here and I... Uh, I did use a 3D model for that, and I'll kind of show you what I had to go off of. And it it had it had the lighting kind of established in it, but it had no textures and stuff. So you know, I I really in that regard, I well, I designed the lighting from a from a thumbnail point, so I, I knew what I wanted the lighting to be. So I don't think it mattered that um, the lighting was restricted at all. It was intentional that way, but um, I didn't you know model any kind of texture or designs in it. So that was. Um, 100% like I had free artistic reign, you know, kind of creativity on that. So let me just take off all these layers to kind of show you. Uh, this is the model. Yeah, it's really kind of simple, crude. There, There's like a slight indication of um, texture. You know, this is clearly, clearly like a reflective type of marble, and then this is more like a stone. But um, this doesn't really tell us much. And if you also are using... 3D as a crutch for your painting, it'll probably still not turn out uh, turn out that well because, as you can tell, it it does take a great deal of painting and just artistic knowledge in general to kind of get it up to um, probably the level you want. So, 
yeah, it's definitely a time saver in the long run, especially on this scene where it was kind of architecture heavy. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I still don't use 3D in 90% of my scenes. I, I, I don't use it all that often, really. I definitely like to kind of hand paint things as much as possible, but that's a personal preference, but I hope that answers your question. So um, thank you for watching, um, everybody, and if you enjoyed it, do, uh, I do encourage you to share if possible, but um, have a nice day and take care.